Hello and welcome to Think About It. I'm Sylvia Henderson, your host, and I invite you to tune in, take what you see and hear, and, well, think about it. So today, we are talking about having a business, running a business, but more specifically, taking over as a second generation in the business. So this is not starting from scratch. This is where I'm interviewing somebody who has taken over, come in, uh, you'll find out why, to take over a business and then grow it and build it more. So we're, I'm talking to Michelle Taylor, and the business is Beta, mm -hmm. and that's B-E-T-A-H. So we'll talk about that name because okay. I'm thinking Beta. I know sororities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we'll find out about the name. So Michelle, welcome. Thank you, Sylvia. It's a pleasure to be here. Good, good, good. So let's jump right in. Second generation business. Mm -hmm. How did the business start and how did you end up taking it over? So my mother founded Beta in 1988 out of the basement of our townhome. I was a senior in high school getting ready to go off to college and um, she always used to say that businesses were primarily started for two reasons. Either there was a fire in the belly or the house was on fire. and. <laughs> She had decided to quit her job as a senior VP of a national nonprofit and just had this passion to start a business that she felt could do well and do good at the same time. She really was a proponent of transforming lives and transforming communities. And, you know, the house is on fire in the sense that she quit and I was going off to college, so, <laughs> Whoa, you know, tuition. yes, yes, but that passion was there, wow. so uh, she just hung out the shingle wow. and, and st started Beta. And the business is, so, or was, or has it transformed? So, uh, basically, the evolution of Beta um, is one where I went off, I had my passion was television and film production, went to Syracuse University. I was determined that I was going to be this uh, award-winning documentary filmmaker. So I went to Syracuse, graduated, went overseas, worked in London at the BBC yeah. and Channel 4 Television as an intern, uh, came back and worked as an intern at National Geographic and eventually worked my way up to an associate producer. And uh, at the same time, my mother, Beta, was thriving and she was winning government contracts because that's the space that we okay. are in. Uh, basically, uh, the focus is on communications, event management, technical assistance, and training. And uh, our largest clients are in with the Department of Health and Human Services, now the Department of Justice, as well as Treasury. But back then, the emphasis was really on health. And uh, she had an opportunity to produce a video conference for, at the time, Surgeon General David Satcher, looking at uh, HIV in the black community. And she asked if I would consider taking a, a break from Nat Geo to come and help produce this. And I did. And really looking at the devastation of HIV in the black community at that time, the infection rates were rising, the stigma was very prevalent. I just didn't go back to wow. Nat Geo. I really felt compelled to see what I could do to use my creative talents to help inform and educate people in a way that could foster change in behaviors and lifestyles. So the business continued to thrive. I was in the role of communications director. And in 2008, uh, my mother passed away from lung cancer. She was a never smoker but uh, su succumbed to the illness uh, in 2008. And at that time, well, I should say, I was not groomed to assume the leadership role. She and I had this pact where she was the business savvy, go-getter entrepreneur. She was profiled in Black Enterprise Magazine. She kicked off their annual conference one year as wow. a keynote. So she had just that serious business acumen and I was the creative. I would come up with these ideas and she would like say, you know, that's great, Michelle, but where's the money? <laughs> <laughs> so we worked very well together and um, at the time, you know, Beta had done a lot of great things, not only in the community, but as a company 
Uh, we were recognized in 2000 as one of the fastest growing companies on the Inc. 500 list Whoa. at the time. Okay. So she was moving and shaking. And uh, in 2008, when she passed away, because we had this pact that I did not want to assume the leadership role because government contracting was not my passion, I didn't know what I was doing. And she actually had an offer on the table to sell. She had signed a letter of intent wow. to release the business and looked me in my eye and said, let it go, don't do this. But me being her daughter, <laughs> she, she knew. Uh, I did the exact opposite. <laughs> and decided that after some sound advice and counsel, I just felt that it wasn't a good offer okay. and I just could not give all that she had worked right. so hard for away. And I just felt compelled to continue the legacy. Uh, again, not knowing anything about business operations, I did not know how to read a balance sheet or an income statement. I just knew if it was negative, that wasn't That's good. <laughs> So, you know, it, it definitely has been a journey for me. But I'm happy to say, while I started out as a sudden CEO, I'm, I'd like to say that I'm a sec successful CEO now. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, Beta, what's, that, what's, the, what's the genesis of the name? So, uh, my mother was a woman of great faith. And looking at different words and meanings, she wanted to bell Taylor. That was just too long. Mm. So, just... Working with our pastor at the time, uh, thumbing through the Old Testament, the word beta uh, came to mind, and that means trust and confidence, and that's what we believe we inspire in our clients. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So are you the only offspring, or do you have siblings? I have half siblings. Okay. So I uh, was my mother's only child, so it is okay. just me, myself, and I. Okay. So the question then, because the que where the question was going is, mm -hmm. Um, I know other second generation, third generation CEOs who there's been a lot of strife in the family mm -hmm. with why you taking it over versus mm -hmm. another sibling. So you didn't have to go through that, it sounds like. No, I did not have that challenge. It literally was just me. Um, the only challenge that I had from a family perspective was, again, not knowing business operations, right. the time that it takes to run a business mm -hmm. and the impact that it does have on families. So there were many times when I did not make certain family milestones mm. and, and moments because I was meeting a client deadline or addressing an operational issue. So that's one family consideration that okay. I had not anticipated. So the challenge is, and of course I were talking Hopefully the viewers are, some anyway, are thinking about, do I step into an existing business, whether it's their family or another family business, or you know, do I start one from scratch? I know I'm sure many of our viewers are working in a company, mm -hmm. um, you know, well paid with employees and might be looking at the possibility of taking over as we baby boomers are aging and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and thinking about what to do with our businesses. So. I'm going to kind of ask you the questions from both ends. Um, uh, as someone taking over, what were some of the challenges that you faced? Well, because... Other than not, not having a business background. Right, right. So for me, be, because I was a sudden CEO, I was dealing with the challenge of grief mm. and just processing what that meant to not only have lost my best friend, my mother, my mentor, but then also the leader of beta. So I was really struggling with that. Um, but aside from the grief, you know, there, just in terms of my mother being such a phenomenal mm -hmm. figure, she set the bar okay. really high. <laughs> and so for me, a challenge was trying to find my own flow. Because uh, you can't replace her. You've right, gotta, yeah. right. And, you know, I found myself constantly, what will Wilhelmina do? What will Wilhelmina do? And trying to emulate her and be her. And that almost killed me because mm -hmm. that's impossible to try to fill shoes of someone who was such a force. And so for me, it really was finding my, my own voice, finding my own leadership style. You know, I say that I, I finally realized that I couldn't fill her shoes, but that I had my own heels to wear. Ooh. So, you know, that's uh, one thing that I tell uh, children who 
assume leadership roles is that you have your own heels or shoes shoes you you have to wear. Ooh, that was a that was a that was a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And how about, so were there employees yes. when you took over? Yes. How was that dynamic? So it it was interesting. Beta has always been somewhat of a family-like culture. Everyone is close, very collaborative, very team-oriented and focused. So when I made the decision to keep Beta's doors open, everybody rallied mm. around and wanted to do what they could to contribute to the continuation of the company. Plus you're keeping their jobs. <laughs> yes, that, 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 that's a major factor as well. Um, but they, they just believed in, in the mission. We do, I'd like to say, we do good work. We that's do impactful work. And so they believed in the mission, they loved my mother, and they wanted to see me succeed as well. And so, you know, I always uh, laugh. One of uh, our employees, she's still with me to this day, she was my boss. So we had that dynamic of mm. on April 24th, things changed and I became her boss. But she gave me the room to find my legs. You know, she was somewhat still mentoring me, but she also gave me that space to grow and figure things out. Wow. Mm -hmm. Some of the advantages of, of not starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did... So, it, it's gonna sound contradictory, hey. but you know, because my mother was such a force, there was a phenomenal foundation that had already been laid, just in terms of Beta's reputation, um, we were known for quality service, quality products. Uh, we had long-standing client relationships. So okay. there was just a phenomenal foundation. And again, the challenge for me was just... Don't screw um, it up. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then gaining the trust of our clients and our vendors and our partners just to you know, assure them that that foundation, that advantage that I had, that I would not squander it or be negligent with it. I really cherished and, and honored the role that I had been placed in. Hmm. And um, so how, we're almost ready for a break, but wow. as we, I, I told you it was <laughs> fast. <right. laughs> uh, so the learning, so mm -hmm. you know, you said you couldn't read a balance sheet. I mean, you had to establish <laughs> your own leadership style. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things you did to grow yourself? So for me, <laughs> You know, it was somewhat arrogance. I don't know. Hey. Well, how, whatever you want to call it. Ego at first, is good. Arrogance. At, at first, I didn't want to admit that I didn't know yeah. anything. I, I was like, well, I'm just going to fake it till I make, made it. But that was impossible because there was just, there are too many things that go into running a business that you can't do that. And you have a responsibility to the people who are trusting that you're going to carry the business forward. So I surrounded myself with mentors. Okay. And advisors, those who ran successful government contracting firms, um, they believed in me and wanted to see the company succeed, so they were willing to share their knowledge and wisdom with me. Um, in later years, I uh, joined a peer advisory group, a roundtable of other CEOs, and I didn't do that the first couple of years because I was, I was kind of in this limbo where I didn't feel that I fit at tables with true startups because there was a foundation and the issues and the topics of discussion, I was a little bit further ahead. But then I didn't uh, feel that I could sit at the table with my mother's peers either. So We're going to take a break. Mm -hmm. I want to continue with that question because okay. there was clearly more. Okay. But let's take a break and with that, we'll be right back. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Hello, welcome back to Think About It. I'm still Sylvia Henderson, your host, and we are still talking about second generation businesses. My guest, Michelle Taylor, and she is the CEO of Beta Associates. Mm -hmm. And so Michelle, when we, before the break, I was asking you about 
So what are some of the learn? How, how did you learn? How did you develop yourself? Mm -hmm. And you finished off talking about mentors. Don't know if there was more to say about that. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to mentors, uh, I encourage individuals, if they can, to identify a peer group, a CEO roundtable, where you can meet consistently to share quite openly some of the challenges and hurdles as well as the successes that you experience because being a CEO can be pretty lonely mm -hmm. and your family and friends can't kind of relate to some of the yeah. issues that you, you go through. You tell your girlfriends, oh girl, you'll be fine. It'll work out. I'll pray for you. It'll work out. Um, and then you don't want your employees to panic yeah when you have to make some tough decisions. So having the benefit of other CEOs to um, engage with and connect with is very important. And then also uh, business programs, leadership programs, mm -hmm. like the Small Business Administration's em Emerging Leaders Program or the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program. Those okay. were very beneficial to me in terms of new insights that I could then take back and apply to the business. So many people say, business founders as well as CEOs say, but I don't have time for that. I've got to make the business run. I'm assuming you make time. That's as important as making the business work. Oh, and that's a very good point. That's a valid point. I actually wasn't able to participate in the business programs until much later because for many years I was working in the business and not on the business. And... Uh, just with the evolution over the 10 years that I've been the CEO, we are now at a point where I can step away and do more of that development, leadership development, professional development that really will help Beta go to that next level. So it, it takes time. It is a process. Mm. But at least once a month, being able to step back and engage with others, I, I think it's, it's a, a necessary thing to do. So speaking of business evolution, mm -hmm. when you first took over, was you know, were you coming into, whoa, things are gangbusters and I need to make sure it keeps moving or no. uh, interruption? I'm, I'm assuming with your mom passing the way she did, <laughs> yeah. illness took yes. a challenge out of the business. It did. It did. Um, my mother was diagnosed with lung cancer in 2004, so there were four years in which the business really coasted on our existing contracts, and there was very little business development. And when she passed away, it was not a good year financially. The, the business was in a significant loss, and again, me not understanding how to read financial statements that negative, it didn't resonate what that truly meant. So mm. for many years, I would say for at least five years, we were wow. in a pretty precarious place. Wow. You know, I had to make some decisions, you know, some of which I'm sure she would not be happy with um, in terms of me utilizing resources that she had put in place to, you know, help me hey, hey. <laughs> live a, a nice life. <laughs> but I just believed in, in the mission and uh, what she had set out to do, and I was determined to see what I could do to move it forward. So um, in 2015, that was really uh, a pivotal moment. I had had a conversation with a trusted advisor and I said, you know, I, I don't think I can go any further. I don't think I can deplete any more of what okay. she left in place. And so I said, if, if something doesn't happen quickly, I'm going to have to make the decision to start shutting this down. And I don't want to call it luck because I am a person of faith. Mm -hmm. um, an opportunity, a blessing came our way from a larger business who was looking for a small business partner to assume what they had managed for 20 years that the government decided they wanted to make it a, a small business set aside. And yeah. that was the game changer for us. We pursued the contract, that large business became our subcontractor, and the rest they say is history. Um, so much so that in 2017, we were recognized by Inc. Magazine as one of the top 5,000 fastest growing companies. So that was a full circle moment from 2000, 2000 when my mother really? had applied for and we received the Inc. 500 recognition. Wow. So. And you've yeah. received some other recognitions. Yes, um, yes. Don't know when this program will air, so I won't say last month, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, some in 2019 anyway, you mm -hmm. were recognized by the Washington Business Journal. Yes, yes, as one of the top area family-owned businesses. So 
for me, again, it's just a full circle moment. Um, I look at that particular award as a culmination and a confirmation for me because last year, 2008, we celebrated 30 years wow. in business. Okay. Uh, so that's a huge milestone. We went all out, had a great celebration. Staff from all over came and we just partied it up. And it was my 10th year as the CEO, so that was bittersweet because I wouldn't be in this position had yeah. my mother not passed away. Um, so the recognition from the Washington Business Journal, it was just confirmation that you know what I had set out to do in honoring my mother's legacy and getting this family-owned recognition, it, it just was a real full circle moment for me. Wow. How about inside? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, and the struggles, is there ever a time where you're feeling like this isn't, can I really make this happen? Mm -hmm. uh, am I worthy, mm -hmm. as they say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So early on, I had many self-doubts. Um, you know, my mother being that ph phenomenal force, trying to emulate her, that didn't work. And there were, with these dark moments and trying to figure this out and me not understanding business ownership, I really did ha have self-doubts. Like, what did I do? You know, <laughs> what was I thinking? I'm not cut out for this. And I remember having a conversation with a family friend and I was just, I can't do this, what did I do? Somebody needs to come in, help, 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 help. And he let me kind of just go on and on. And then he quietly, after I got myself together, he said, you know, Michelle, you're it, so be it. And that was one of those sobering, like, mm. oh, okay. And so from that point on, I'm it, so be it, just really resonated with me. And I, I didn't look back and just put my head down and really started on the grind and working in the business and just getting those mentors, participating in peer groups and getting the assurances and, and the um, education mm -hmm. that I needed to, to, to take the company to that next level. But yeah, there's a lot of moments of self-doubt and you know, every once in a while it rears its, uh, its ugly it head. Work. Yep, yep. <laughs> But uh, more and more, I, I feel like I, I've gained my stride. So what's next? Do you envision a third generation taking over? Or without getting personal, I don't know if there is a third generation yet. Uh, but it's, do you? it's, I have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's my office assistant. So. Yeah, yeah. So for Beta, really, um, it's just a matter of, of growing it. I, I would like to continue to see the company thrive and do good and do well at the same time. Mm. Um, eventually, I don't know when, um, maybe someone would be interested in acquiring it, but that's not something that I foresee in the, in the near future. I'm, I'm really enjoying what we're doing, who we're serving. I love my staff and just want to see see what we can do. So if somebody is watching and thinking, wow, it doesn't sound, you know, there's some goods and some, some positives and some negatives, but I think I will kind of investigate taking over or getting into a business. Have you mm -hmm. got any thoughts or suggestions for how do you ease in, because hopefully, people don't and have to take over the way you did. Mm -hmm. But for easing in and growing in the family business instead of feeling entitled? Mm -hmm. I would encourage individuals who, if you are working in the company already, to just sit at your parents' feet and really just learn as much as you can and um, do Touch every aspect of the business if you can. Cer certain things, if it's just not your lane, it's not your lane. But you really have to understand how the business operates from the top, to, well, the top to the bottom. That's a good old-fashioned start in the mailroom, yeah. work your way up. Yeah, yeah, really. Um, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, you know, just be a sponge. Be a sponge. Hmm. And... So the difference then, so what do you consider your leadership style and how that differed from your mom? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> you, you have I have to, to laugh. Own... Well, so I'm more emotional. I mean, okay. she was a very compassionate, warm person, but she was 
all about business. Okay, and well, she started it. She was yeah, like, okay. yeah, it was her baby. Whereas for me, and this was something she was always worried about, is I love people, I love to be friendly, and, you know, I just love the connection and the collaboration, which is not a bad thing. Um, but at times, you do have to have somewhat of a, I don't want to say a wall because that sounds cold, but there have to be boundaries. Okay. So I would say boundaries, establishing certain clear boundaries is important. Um, and I, I chuckle because I am an emotional person. She used to call me waterhead. <laughs> I was sharing <laughs> that story. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, I'm just more of a, a people person. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I, I can, so I haven't taken, I started a business, I haven't taken over one, but I was mm -hmm. a manager at a major corporation. Mm -hmm. And I can, I get that. I wanted to be liked. I didn't want people to just, and when you become a manager, there, yeah. your friends that you went to lunch with the day before are suddenly, yeah. you know, you've got to be manager. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So close to the end, mm -hmm. talk about beta a little bit, some shameless self-promotion and, and why should people contact Beta, what do you do, a little okay. bit more specifically, and okay. then how can they reach you? Okay. Uh, again, we're, a pro well, Beta is a professional services firm. We're located in Rockville, Maryland, and we work with clients to transform the lives of individuals and communities through communications and event management solutions. So, um, for instance, May is Older Americans Month. And one of our clients is the Administration for Community Living. So we have a communications contract, okay. and we are responsible for doing all the branding, theme, developing, development messaging around Older Americans Month. Uh, for the, uh, and so just really helping clients connect with communities. Okay. I like to say we produce events, materials, and messages that matter. Ooh, like that. Thank you. Present e events, <laughs> materials, and messages that matter. Mm -hmm. So when a company's just starting and figuring out their branding, that's not what you do or it um, is? We, we could, okay. but really uh, more so helping develop branding for uh, government agencies, okay. trying to get critical information out into communities to change lives and, and uh, behaviors, if you will. Awesome. And they reach you how? Your uh, website is? www.beta.com, and that's B-E-T-A-H.com. Awesome. Any last messages, last words you want to leave a viewer about business in general, life in general? Um, because this is focusing on second generation businesses, I would just uh, uh, encourage those who have assumed the, assumed the leadership role that if you started it, because the house was on fire, just trust and believe that eventually that fire in the belly will come and you will succeed. And you used the phrase fire in the belly or the house is on fire. House is on fire. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Michelle, thank you so much for talking about the business, for being transparent about the ups and downs, your feelings. Um, I know your employees are going to be watching this. So <laughs> they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so thanks so much for being my guest. Oh, thank you, Sylvia. It's truly been a pleasure. Great. And so to you viewers, uh, thank you for joining us. I appreciate your time and you're watching us. Until next time, I invite you to tune in, take what you see in here, and, well, think about it. I'm Sylvia Henderson. Make a great day.